Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to Legion Talk, episode number 103. Now, it's been a very, very busy couple days in the news, and it just keeps giving. Before we get into the article, uh, please click the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, go over to Legion Games 2076, my main channel, subscribe over there, and in the description below, if you feel the need to uh, support my work more uh, closely, uh, you can find my Patreon and subscribe star. Thank you so much, and uh, without any further delay, here we go, Superman actor... Dean Kane mocked for saying the new bisexual Man of Steel is bandwagoning. Well, he's not wrong. He's not wrong whatsoever. Former superstar actor Dean Kane has accused comic book writers of bandwagoning after it was announced the new Man of Steel was coming out as bisexual. As you can see, this is the artwork there. Now, this isn't Clark Kent. This is Clark Kent's son, John, uh, Jonathan Kent, or John. However, he is an established character and he is not. He is not bisexual. Never has been. Until six years later where they want to cheaply, you know, instead of creating new characters, you know, with, with some actual thought and feeling, they have to rip off, uh, you know, standard characters because they know that um, if they don't do it the right way and put real investment into it and real story and real talent, nobody's going to read it. So instead of uh, taking, you know, characters that, uh, you know, people will read, uh, they're too lazy or they, they're too, you know, they, they don't have the uh, skills to do so to tell a new story. Kane, who played Clark Kent in television's uh, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman from 1993 to 1997, alongside Terry Hatcher. This is how I was introduced to Superman when I was a kid, because my parents watched it every Sunday, if I remember correctly said the move from DC Comics would have been brave 20 years ago, but left him unimpressed now. He's absolutely right. There is nothing stunning and brave about coming out as gay or bisexual or, or, or trans or anything like that in today's world. There's, there's nothing stunning and brave about it. People, people, for the most part, don't even really care anymore. It's when you do this crap, then people are like, um, what's, what's she doing? I remember when they said they just wanted to live their lives. That's what the activist says. So they just want to live their lives and they just want to get married and, and, and be like the rest of us. Well, for the most part, that is mostly what the LGBT, uh, you know, community wanted. But the activists keep shifting the goalposts. That's not what they want. The activists and not I'm not saying the community itself, but the activists who make the community look horrendous to the rest of the world because they do this crap. Uh, keep pushing the goalposts because they want special treatment. There's a difference. DC Comics announced on Monday that John Kent, the son of Clark and Lois Lane, and then the, uh, the heir to the Superman mantle, will uh, kiss love interest Jay Nakamura in an um, upcoming comic book, Superman: Son of Kal El, number five. Yeah, um, the stats are out for that, and it's and, and it's um it's shipped about forty thousand units. Uh, a real comic book. Uh, you know, uh, King Spawn uh, has done almost 10 times that, almost more, more than 10 times, with almost 500,000 units. That's a real comic book, by the way. One that people actually want to read. Kane, who is, a, who is a conservative and supporter of Donald Trump, I mean, I, I have not seen, I know he, he's probably leans more conservative, uh, but I haven't seen anything, him saying he supports Donald Trump. Uh, I guess they just assume that in these articles nowadays. Um, I mean, I've been called, you know, I've been, I've been called, uh, you know, a insurrectionist and, and, uh, and a Trumpster and all that stuff. And I'm like, what, you know, told that I was treasonous, dude, I served in the U S military. Oh, you traitors. I'm like, dude, if I was at the Capitol, I'd be in handcuffs. Are you stupid? Somebody told me this. They, they called me a traitor. I'm like, are you a loser? The answer is yes. These people are losers. They're miserable human beings with nothing else to make themselves feel better but then to tear down other things that people like because they have nothing that they hold dear. Told Fox and friends, they said it's a bold new direction. I say they're bandwagoning. Not wrong. I don't think it's bold or brave or some crazy new direction. If they had done this 20 years, dear, uh, 20 years ago, perhaps that would have been bold or brave. Even though Will and Grace was a thing, um, I mean, he's got a point, but even though Will and Grace was a thing, um, you know, on Friends, that came out in 1994, Ross's uh, ex-wife was became a lesbian. Uh, that was that was talked about. I mean, th this isn't nothing new. 
eh, if you want to talk about it, maybe in, in, in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, maybe some of the 80s, but in the 90s, it's not really a little bit. Oddly, Kane believed it would be brave for the writers to have Superman and not be bisexual, but to fight against the political landscape and justices currently happening in the Middle East. He's not wrong. Or maybe China, you know, where the Uyghur Muslims are uh, in, um, you know, uh, rehabilitation camps, you know, kind of the things that they want to do in Australia for people who get the coof. When you put camp on it and you want to round people up, that's taking a play out of Adolf, uh, Adolf's book. Have you read his book, Mein Kampf? Brave would be having uh, him fight for the rights of uh, gay people in Iran, where they they it is not accepted, and they stoned them to death. But hey, the activists won't talk about that because they're not gonna they're not gonna put themselves in real danger. They're gonna, they're gonna talk about you know stunning and brave here, and we're doing so much. Go to a real place where this is a real problem, like China, Iraq, Iran, Pakistan, even Saudi Arabia. Go, go to the, your beloved Palestine that you think is so lovely, um, even though it's not a real place, it's in Israel. And uh, the Israel government wouldn't be doing this, but the Palestinians, um, yeah, they would stone you to death because they're hardcore Islamists. Okay, Mr. Silly Bears? Where they'll throw you off a building for, for the offense of being gay. He's not wrong or stone you to death. Why don't they have him fight the injustice that it created the refugees whose uh, whose deportation he's pro protesting? That would be brave. I'd read that. Or fight for the rights of women to attend school and work and live and uh, and boys not to be uh, raped by men under new warm and fuzzy the new warm and fuzzy Taliban. Not wrong there too. Kane added, "There's a real evil in this world, real corruption and government overreach. It'd be a great it'd be great to tackle those issues because they're real world issues." I'd like to see the, uh, the character doing that. However, uh, although Kane might have thought his argument had some sound logic to it, it does. His name was trendy with many people mocking his stance, especially as his run on Superman was best known for having one of the best on-screen interpretations of Lois Lane. I don't know why they're mocking that. How, I mean, is that something that's, that's controversial? That was a very popular show. It's a very popular show. It introduced a lot of kids to to superman and it reinvigorated a lot of adult adults into superman because no offense superman three and four kind of sucked one and two solid three and four <sighs> dean kane who starred in the superman tv series that became famous for terry hatcher oh Mehdi hassan said on october 12 2021 Yet, Terry Hatcher doesn't really do, uh, you know, hasn't done a lot, a lot of acting in a while either. And they've both been in Smallville because they were both acknowledged as being a part of the Superman legacy. Okay? Let's be clear. Dean Cain doesn't read comic books. If he weren't guaranteed a fee, he'd never set foot in a comic book com convention. Actually, he seems to be like one of the most humble dudes there is. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like Brendan Fraser, like, you know, fans love him for what he does. He's kind to people. So asking his opinion because he was categorically worst Superman actor in creation for three, for three seasons, 30 years is a useless exercise. I don't think you understand what you're talking about. Jamal Eagle, Baltimore Comic-Con booth. Yeah, no offense, Jamal Eagle. I'm not going to take advice from somebody who's coming from a Baltimore Comic-Con. Y'all going to burn a city down again? For old what's his name? How bold is Dean Kane? You played one of the best honorable heroic caring characters of all time, yet managed to not actually hold one of those principles. Ricky Williams, fully vaccinated. Positive vibes. That means you're a loser. When you put fully vaccinated in there. Ah, right, here we go. We'll, we'll, we'll skip to the last two. Yeah, why are they uh, sexualizing a superhero? Maybe Laura Laura should have Dean Kane on, on to weigh in on controversy. 
I'd say that's yeah, that's that's reasonable. You know, Superman's never really been strongly sexualized. Now, Clark Kent has because, you know, every once in a while Clark would take his shirt off. And, you know, of course, Lois, who is the love of his life, it is for her reaction because it is to bring them together. That is their story. Clark is only sexualized in in the instance to capture Lois's attention because she thinks of him mostly as a bumbling, goofy, lovable fool, but not in a romantic kind of way. And it's not until the shift. This is the best Superman actors. Christopher Reeves, absolutely. Henry Cavill, I wouldn't have said that. Hmm. Okay, well, no, Henry Cavill is definitely up there, but I'm trying to think of the pacing. This is tough. Christopher Reeve, they're, they're hands down. Um, Tom Welling didn't really play Clark, uh, Superman. He played Clark Kent, but he did such a damn good job that Christopher Reeves endorsed him personally. I'd have to say Christopher Reeve... Tom Welling, Dean Cain, Henry Cavill, Tyler Hoechlin, Brandon Routh. Now, this is nothing against Brandon Routh. He, he did a fine job, but they didn't, they didn't let him speak a whole lot. And um, Henry Cavill, at the same time, they gave him a darker tone of the movie, but that's not his fault. That's the tone of the movie. Christopher Reeve, hands down. Then I'd say Tom Welling, because he perfectly encompassed... Uh, the back and forth between Clark trying to be himself and try to not be the nerd and the, and boosting himself up to be kind of like, you know, superhero-esque and then having to turn it on his head and flop over when Lois, uh, Erica Durrance, uh, she's like, do we want people thinking Clark Kent can save the day or do we want do we want people thinking that Clark Kent can't you know doesn't have what it takes and that's when she makes him put glasses on and a bubbling bumbling fool and he hates it but he loves her and he realizes that she's right so christopher reeves tom welling dean kane henry cavill uh tyler hoshland brandon routh no, nothing against him but uh henry cavill and brandon routh both kind of played darker darker roles in it and um it, it kind of it misses a little bit but i still like them so here you go, new new from on Twitter, new DC comic writer didn't like my opinion. Tom Taylor, the artist, has blocked me. That's right. Really, Twitter? Why why does Twitter take longer to upload stuff than than normal things? Yeah, I got I got a little little sarcastic. But the thing is, though, is that um the, they they were being kind of um. They were they were kind of lashing out at fans, and I was like, "Oh, congratulations on your forty thousand units sold." King Spawn sold over four hundred thousand. Yeah, I got blocked. I mean, am I surprised? No. Uh, that's over the Dave Chappelle thing, because apparently you can't um, you can't talk. You know. Oh, another one. Oh, no, that's Dave Chappelle. Sorry. And then here, another one talking about. Um, she was talking about how it's pathetic that people can't accept the fact that that Superman is now bisexual. Like, and I was like, okay, so you're lashing out at fans? Cool. I said, no, what's what's pathetic is taking an already established character and changing it for your own agenda. Blocked. Th these these people can't handle the criticism because they're hypocrites. It's ridiculous. Like you, you are literally, this is literally the face of, you know, of, of the, the most hypocritical people on the planet. Because, you know what, you don't agree with them, they can't stand your opinion. And it's not like you go out of your way to be, I was not nasty with this person, but the way she was with the, her comments was nasty. She was, she was talking down to fans. That's not how you sell stuff, by the way. If you're selling something, you might want to kiss a little bit of butt. You know, I'll be like, hey. I wrote this for you. It's so great. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's got this, 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 and this. You know, be, be, be a salesperson because you want people to buy your books. Don't be uh, don't be like the weirdos on Twitter who who think that, um, you know, they're, they're above all of this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, 
Good luck to all of you who wrote this trash comic. It's probably going to be forgotten in about three months, and uh, you're not probably going to sell more than like maybe 40,000 copies, period. Uh, and that's for shipment, and probably only about maybe 20,000 to 25,000 people actually ordered them. The other ones are probably going to sit on a comic book shelf that nobody's ever going to buy and go into recycle bin one day. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you again real soon. See you guys.